everyone. I am Pat Soldano, president of Family Enterprise USA. We promote generationally owned family businesses and their lifetime of savings in the United States, all sizes of business and all industries of business. So I'm very pleased to have with me today, Chad Goodfellow, who is the CEO of Goodfellow Brothers. Really appreciate him getting on the call today to tell us about his family business, his family story, and share with him some share with us some of his experiences. So Chad, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. So let's start um, by having you give us a brief history of the family business. I know it's over a hundred years old. That's that's so, so exciting. Share with us maybe the history, how it got started, and a little bit about the business. Yes. So um so Goodfellow Brothers were a heavy civil construction contracting business. It was founded by my great-grandfather and his two brothers um, shortly after World War II. Um, they, uh, well, shortly, actually, shortly after World War I, I would, I, let me predate myself. So in 1921, so last year was our 100-year anniversary. Um, back when they founded the organization, it was really about providing infrastructure and roads to communities that weren't able to get their products to port. So our company was originally founded in Wenatchee, Washington. Um, Wenatchee is kind of the breadbasket of Washington state. It's the apple capital of the world. There's lots of cherry orchards, apple orchards, pear orchards, wheat. And, um, and at that time, a lot of the farmers and, and orchardists in the area um, had a tremendously difficult opportunity to get their, um, their, fruits and different things out to the port of Seattle. And so in the early days, a lot of our construction projects were basically building the roads and building the infrastructure to connect the agricultural hub of, of the state to the port of Seattle. Um, back then, when we would estimate jobs, we were estimating based on bales of hay to feed the horses that would pull the equipment. Uh, in today's world, you know, we're estimating based on, you know, kind of some of the, the newer technology of GPS and, um, and diesel powered equipment, but, uh, but still to our family, you know, our roots have stayed the same. And our mission really falls around taking care of being the contractor of choice for our employees, our customers, and the communities in which we live and work. Um, currently, we work across the Pacific Northwest in Washington State, Oregon, uh, Northern California, from Santa Clara out to Sacramento, and um, on every island in the state of Hawaii. So we have about 300 uh, salaried employees, and we have about 1,200 uh, union employees that help us uh, solve the the day-to-day -day challenges for our customers and and help build the infrastructure of the country. Well, that's really interesting, and I and I know you're fourth generation, uh, and and kudos to you for for doing that, uh, making it to the fourth generation. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit more about the community involvement that you mentioned. Uh, as we've learned with our annual survey, 76% of family businesses actually do give locally. So if the family business has to be um, cut back or you know sold for whatever reason, be it the estate tax or or other economic reasons, you know, not only do the family suffer and the employees suffer, but the community suffer. So so talk to us a little bit about the community giving that you and the family and the business do. Absolutely. You know, my great grandfather, who was the founder of the company, um, you know, he was a, a very patriotic man and uh, particularly having just fought in the war with his brothers. And uh, and so one of the things that was really important to him was they said, uh, you know, we just got back. He was in the Army Corps of Engineers and they, they were helping rebuild Europe. And uh, and the thing that he was most passionate about was how do we rebuild our country, you know? And so when he came back, that was his, his mission. And he'd always say, you know, we don't just build projects, you know, we build America. And, uh, and so we still in today's, uh, you know, even though we, the tools are different today, uh, we still, you know, keep that very near and dear to our heart and, and beyond just building in the communities in which we live and work, you know, it's about giving back. And, my family, this is actually uh, 2022 is our 50th year working in the state of Hawaii. 
Um, and uh, we've been incredibly fortunate to have been brought in to this community. And there have been a lot of people along the history of our organization that have supported us and, and helped us uh, grow and helped us be successful in the state of Hawaii. So, so with that, you know, it also comes a responsibility to give back and, and things that we do, you know, on all the islands, um, you know, one thing in particular that it makes a pretty decent impact is uh, anytime there's a major forest fire, um, the resources of, you know, the different islands in the state, you know, they don't have the, uh, the helicopters and the heavy equipment and all the different things that, um, that we have to help create fire breaks and help, you know, protect people that are in harm's way. And so um, whenever there's a fire, uh, you know, we're a first responder and we have all of our, you know, the operators and folks that are involved in fighting fires um, certified and trained to be able to fight fire. And, um, and we've been able to save, you know, a lot of houses over the years. And, and it's something that we take a lot of pride in being able to help out our community in that regard. Um, as far as different uh, nonprofits, you know, Maui, the Maui community is, uh, is very fortunate. We've got a lot of great people doing a lot of great things within this specific community. And, um, and so we do our very best to support as many as we can. Um, and being, you know, a local family owned business, um, it allows us to kind of reinvest in the communities that we live in. And uh, whereas some of the larger, you know, kind of multinational corporations, they have a different giving uh, strategy. I think it's, it's more globally based. Um, for us, it really allows us to give back to our home. And, uh, and we take a lot of pride in that as well. You should. That's just amazing. That's really a, a great for the community. And um, I'm sure it is very rewarding to the people doing the work as well. So um, that's excellent. So you're in a, a big industry, um, probably pretty regulated industry. And uh, so you have to deal with government regulations as well as, you know, tax and economic policy that our country imposes on not only businesses, but the families of those businesses. And so maybe you could talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, maybe what you've endured or what your opinions are around kind of these, some of the policies that you and your family and your business have had to endure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the, the big impediments that, uh, that we face, you know, a lot of it is even for the, you know, we both work for private infrastructure, private developers, and we also work for the different municipalities and states, um, you know, across where we work. And, and one thing that we've seen over the last, you know, probably 30 years is the level of regulatory requirements and permitting requirements that go into a project before it can actually break ground, before our employees can actually go and show up and start, um, you know, moving material it's been significant. And, um, and there's a lot of places where there is overlap where agencies are, are looking at similar things, whether it's a federal agency and a state agency or a county and just, you know, agency all um, reviewing the same type of information. Um, and with that, you know, we see a lot of delays, um, you know, as an example, in the state of Hawaii, are probably on average, um, from a time a project is bid to a time where it is actually ready to go to work can be over a year, which is really mm -hmm. challenging when you're trying to forecast the cost of diesel and the cost of materials um, at bid time, knowing that the project probably isn't going to take place for, for over a year. So, so those type of challenges, a lot of them are due to permitting situations, you know, whether it's a, um, you know, a federal um, waterway permit or whether it's a federal um, or even a state or county, um, you know, Department of Health permits, you know, it becomes um, really challenging to even know the process at which some of these permitting, some of these projects have to take to get ready for a heavy civil con contractor to even show up. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, how about on the family's front? I mean, the I assume that you operate through a C corp. Are you a regular corporation, or are you uh, an S corp, or you know, pass through entity? So, so we we actually have um, we're primarily an S corp. So we're primarily a pass through organization. Um, one of the philosophies of our business has always been 
um, for you to have ownership within the business, you need to work within the business. So, so that is a way that over the 100 years or 101 years we've been in business to, to really try to consolidate ownership to those people that really understand the challenges that our employees face, you know, because they're the, the people that we work with and the families that we work with day in, day out. Um, so that's thankfully allowed us to stay as a, um, as an escort. And, um, and so we've been that way as, as long as I've been in, involved in the organization. Uh, but it is, uh, you know, there is a lot of challenges, particularly in a, in a equipment capital expenditure, heavy business like construction. Um, well, you know, we may make profits, you know, a lot of what we make has to be reinvested into capital purchases. And also, you know, it's a, a core part of our philosophy is we want to reinvest in the people that, that work for us. And uh, so usually at the end of the day, I think like any family business or any business owner knows, you know, you, you give out, you know, you do everything you need to keep the business successful and healthy. And then you make sure that you take care of all the people that are out there working for us and their families. Mm -hmm. And then whatever's left over, you know, comes to the family, right? We're, we're the last in line, right? And, um, and, you know, we've been fortunate because we do have great people that, uh, that take good care of us, but, uh, but yeah, it is, it is daunting when you need to buy, you know, a new D10 dozer, which, you know, in today's market is, is probably $1.7 million, you know, just for one, uh, for one piece of equipment. And, uh, and frankly, we need a lot more than one. Well, I think it's really commendable that, you know, you want the family to work in the business. And if they want to be owners, they have to work in the business. Um, but operating as as a, as a S Corp is very expensive because the, you know, the regular corporations and most companies your size, I would suspect, um, would be a regular corporation. They get to pay 21% in income taxes, and yet you're paying 35 plus percent. So as you said, that leaves you a lot less money to invest back in the business and creating new jobs. And that's one of the things that we're trying to get legislators to understand, because we've learned that almost 80% of family businesses operate as a pass-through entity. So they're paying these very high income tax rates. And Congress, through the Build Back Better Act, was in, in fact trying to increase those rates. So it's really important that we let our members of Congress know just how onerous that tax is. And then I'm sure you've had to deal with the estate tax on top of that, right? I mean, family businesses, families are the ones that pay an estate tax, not corporations. So I'm assuming you've done tried to do some planning around the estate tax, but that also becomes very expensive. It's been for us, it's been 20 years of planning, you know, and um, and we're still not completely through the uh, the whole estate planning process. Thankfully, um, my father had the foresight to start early and, um, and I've been able to, to buy shares, you know, and then once you, you know, pay that off then you buy some more. So, you know, you, I've been living this, uh, this life of debt, you know, to try to try to get ourselves, uh, you know, to work this ownership transition, but, um, but it is, it's, it's, in, it, it's really cumbersome. And I think that as we go forward, you know, it, it becomes a, a real challenge as the company has grown over the years because, you know, the company is a lot bigger than it was um, when we started our ownership transition over the last 20 years. And I, I fear what, um, you know, what that will look like when it comes time for us to, to transition to the fifth generation. Well, so maybe um, based on that, you could share um, some of your thoughts around what could Congress do to help you um, be able to invest more in your business and your community and hire more jobs? You know, what are some of the uh, maybe negative legislation regulation they could take away? What new regulation or what what new tax laws or reduction in tax laws could they uh, implement that would help you? So I think first off, um, you know, definitely looking at a lot of the environmental regulation around getting both public works, private works, and utility projects started. Um, you know, we do a lot of renewable energy projects, both solar and um, and wind. And the reality is, um, you know, it's a multi-year process, you know, and sometimes over a decade to get one of those projects fully approved to be able to get to work. And, um, and so I look at that as a huge opportunity, not just for, 
for us and our business, but for the country to be able to hopefully generate more renewable energy and also, you know, get those construction jobs that are, that are, you know, tied to that. Um, but it doesn't just stop there. I mean, it, you know, whether it's the state of Hawaii, you know, sometimes they have the same challenges that, um, that a private developer does um, when it comes to building these projects. And so, you know, we really look to the federal government as hopefully setting the path and leading the way um, and, and creating a, a system that has not just, um, you know, a streamlined process, but also specific dates and specific timelines that need to be met so that reviews can happen in a expeditious process. And, and I am not against, you know, I, I am definitely for environmental review. My concern is, is the length of time that is taking, you know, for the environmental reviews. And so, so I would hope that, um, that our friends in Washington could be able to, to dig in and be able to help, um, you know, to help that process become, you know, more streamlined. I think from a tax policy standpoint, you know, there were some things that have been really, really great, you know, over the past few years. Um, you know, one is, you know, being able to fully depreciate new purchases. And, and we know that that's going away. But, um, but that really helps us when it comes time to make those, those purchases to be able to get the full benefit of the depreciation, um, particularly because we are an S corp. Right. And so when I use the, the uh, last in line, you know, I, I forgot to probably put in who's first in line, which is the federal government, you know, the, the tax bill comes out right off the top. Right. And that's a, there's a lot of cash that could be deployed in reinvesting into our business that, um, that currently we don't have that opportunity. And um, and so that would definitely be another one that I think um, has been been very helpful, and we're we're going to be sad to see it go. Well, that is very uh, very interesting and very insightful, and I know our members of Congress will be very anxious to hear that. So, um, do you? I, I really appreciate your time today. Do you have any final words that you would like to leave us with? Uh, I think first is thank you. Um, I know that the process and being a public servant. Um, is a difficult one, and there's a lot of competing interests across our country, and um, and for that reason, you know, the willingness to really step up and take on that role, take on the burden for the benefit of our country, is something that's, you know, we I can't share how incredibly grateful we are to each and every um, person that has decided to to take that role on and and take the plunge. I think um, you know the more that that we can be mindful of our um, constituencies and the people that are out there in the field and working um, is, a, is a huge piece of us. We're a union organization. We take a lot of pride in our people. We take a lot of pride in their ability to be successful and, and make a better life, not just for themselves, but for their children. And, um, and we do have the ability, being a family company, to do more for our employees than a publicly traded company can. You know, we we joke, but we say, you know, when there's a challenging situation, we have to have a shareholders meeting. It's pretty easy. It's me, my dad, and my uncle. We sit around the table and we say, what's the right thing to do? And we go, okay, well, then that's what we're going to do. And um, and unfortunately, in the world we live in today, um, shareholders meetings, you know, on Wall Street aren't as um, aren't as easy to have. And I think that's a real blessing that being a family company, um, we're able to do and be able to provide greater employment, but also a greater service to our employees. And um, And we feel really proud of that. And we hope to be able to continue it into the next hundred years. Well, thank you for sharing that because you're absolutely right. Family businesses have that kind of flexibility and agility. And, and that's why during the pandemic, 90% of them kept their employees employed, even some of them that shut down. So we really appreciate that. We really appreciate what you do for your employees and your community. We also really appreciate your membership in Family Enterprise USA. You allow us to talk to members of Congress to bring your messages and your challenges and your issues and you allow us this, you know, the this kind of interaction with you in a video that we can share with the rest of the world to just show how wonderful family businesses are in this country. So once again, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. I appreciate the story and I appreciate all the very valuable information. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care, Chad. Mm -hmm.